I'm here on the shores of Lake Erie at one of the most southern tips of Canada, right in the heart of the Long Point biosphere. We've had an incredible day of fishing. I've got smallmouth bass, rock bass, some sunfish. Putting them all together, I'm inspired by a dish that I had in the south of France, pulling together flavors from Provence. So we're gonna bring together tomatoes and olives, olive oil, some fennel, beautiful flavors. The first thing I have to do is get the fish filleted and get them in the pan, start to develop some flavor, and then I'll cook all the vegetables together. It's gonna to be a very hearty meal and a very hearty shore lunch for such a beautiful day. With your pan preheated, it's really important with fish to have a preheated pan. Go in with some olive oil or some butter. Now you can have some challenges here because for even cooking, you gotta make sure that fat's all over the bottom of that pan completely coated and then look how much just that small morning catch yielded beautiful small mouth I'm just gonna gently coat it as I lay it in look at that isn't that incredible all the bones are out and now it's time to develop some flavor a little bit of salt and some fine black pepper, developing all kinds of flavor there. Some fish is gonna eat that and go, oh, oh pepper. Oh. <laughs> oh my goodness, you smelling that? Try not to touch the fish at all in the first cooking phase so that it doesn't stick to the pan. You'll know when it's ready to turn. You'll see it's almost three quarters of the way cooked, which means it's turning white. Just a tiny bit of pink left. Then it's ready to turn. Oh yeah, that's flavor right there. Once the fish is cooked, just turn your heat off for a minute. Looking out here, I don't think I've ever cooked in a more beautiful place. Standing here in the water where the fish were swimming this morning is pretty cool. Now it's time to get the fish out of the pan. And don't worry about anything that's stuck to the pan on the bottom because we're gonna use that to develop the flavor base. But do make sure to get every last bit of the fish out. We don't want it to be overcooked. The fish will add right at the end. With the fish out of the pan, I've turned the pan on. Normally I would deglaze at the end of cooking, but right now I'm gonna do it because I don't want that fish to burn. So all that flavor that's on the bottom is gonna be picked up. Now, the other way that I'm gonna get this going is I've got some shallots here. I've already cut some and put those in. There's lots of liquid in those shallots. And this is what I did. I just literally took off the root and take off the tip take off that outer skin so the first layer take that off and then slice it just like so with all the shallots in the pan you can see already the color down here basically what I've developed is a very simple fish stock so we're going to continue to cook that until the shallots are translucent and slightly colored, and then we'll begin to add in the rest of the ingredients. The next ingredient is fresh fennel. And this has a licorice flavor and fragrance, uh, but with fish, fish absolutely love it. So what I'm gonna do is just slice off a small piece. I don't need very much. It's gonna add a ton. And all I wanna do is just remove the root the outside and then a super fine slice. You'll see all that intense flavor developed. The next ingredient to go in is the fennel. Saute it until it's golden brown and continue to cook. The fronds of the fennel are as tasty as the bulb itself and I always use some in cooking and save some for garnish. Whenever you're cooking over a fire like this, I always have a little bit of extra water handy. Things get a little too hot, you can always cool it down and deglaze. Remember, you can always remove water by just simply continuing to cook. 
So as this cooks away, the next step is going to be to combine some of the ingredients. So I'm going to finish with the tomatoes. I'm going to get a little bit of citrus in there with the lime. Then I've got some beautiful fresh spring onions and garlic scapes. All of these things together really bring me to that Provencal style of cooking and really bring it together nice. It smells incredible right now and all I can wait is to get this on a crusty baguette and enjoy it in this beautiful sunshine. Mm. There's one thing about being out on the water is you always have an incredible appetite. Now these olives, while not pitted, you don't have to be fancy with them. Just give them a little press, tear out the seed, that little pit, toss those in there, crush them up. They're going to be incredible. And I just love that briny saltiness that they bring. As this cooks down, the smell is incredible. And I'm going to wait and hold till it's just the right consistency. And then I'll go back in with the fish to finish. Nearly finished and I'm just going to strip in fresh thyme. Plenty of fresh thyme. And uh, the very last step after the thyme goes in, you can see I've got an incredible sauce going there. And the last step is to turn it off and gently put the fish back in. I'm going to leave the fish on top because I don't want to hide that incredible ingredient. And this is a perfect way to finish it up. I think served family style in a big paella dish or a large oversized walker giant cast iron pan. It's a great way to bring together the acidity of those tomatoes and all the richness of the vegetables, the briny saltiness of the uh, olives, and then for the last bite, I'm just gonna take a little bit of this. A little bit of tomato, a little bit of everything all together. Mm. <laughs> what a perfect way to enjoy this beautiful Lake Erie fish. I love it.